They can hear us, I believe. No, they can hear me. They can't hear you. But now they can, can they hear you. Are we even live? I don't we, see just, on we just went live. It's going to take a second. Okay, I see now. Let me tweet this garbage out. Let's give. Let's maybe like kill time for five minutes or so while people get in here since we're yeah, exactly. springing this on people. Right. I, yeah, I feel like I might want to get some water and stuff. Yeah, it's fine. Come watch the 30th most popular video game podcast in the US. <laughs> oh, we're live. Oh, we know you we can hear us. We want you to hear it all. Smash that like button. Ring that bell. Subscribe. That's it's nice though that people in chat were like we, we can hear you. Just so don't say anything racist. That's, that, uh, is, that's <laughs> that is nice. Thank you, Chad. Wow, that's where it's going. <laughs> I mean, I am from Ohio. You never know. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Yeah, uh, we'll go, do you want, we're gonna we're gonna get started in a few minutes. I'm no, I'm gonna go get some water and stuff. Uh, yeah. Were, were you gonna ask something, Mike? I was probably gonna do a bad joke. I don't remember. Oh, I'll sorry. entertain them while you go. Okay, I'll be right back. Uh, hi everyone. Do what? Did you see us? You see us on the E3? Yeah. We're just we're gonna chill for a moment here. We just we did just kind of spring this. But there's no scheduled time, so make sure people know we're going live before we uh, bow to the masters. Break it down. They generate into something, fool. I just got tired of doing what you told me to do. That's the breaks, boy. Yeah, that's the breaks, little man. Break it down. Sorry for everyone that horribly confused. Somebody started that in chat. I don't even think they were doing a Degeneration X reference, but that's where I took it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for watching our E3 thing. It, well, it is E3 day one, technically, but we counted two days ago because of Summer Game Fest as E3. And then yesterday, since, since, since two days ago was day one, we called yesterday day two. So now this is day three. We're going to call it day three. We're going to stick with that. We're going to stick with that. Why not? <sighs> so we got Microsoft tomorrow at 10. Show sucked today, except for the Games Beat Decides podcast segment is what you meant. Yup, yup, I, I assume. Oh, I'm sure that was incredibly confusing to anybody who does not watch wrestling. <laughs> Sorry to hear you had a bad day at work, Regi. Regi? Yeah. We've been there. Grab a grab a seat. If you partake, grab yourself a beer. I have already done that. Ready to go. Making some I feel like we're making good Arby's progress. I, they must maybe they saw how popular we are on Twitch. They know that Greg Miller knows our names on a first name basis, so that's good. Jeff doesn't like John. Well, Jeff doesn't like Jeff's weird because 90% of our interests are very similar. And then it's just the most random things he doesn't like, like John Wick or a hollow Knight or what, what have you. Yes. And if you aren't down with that, we got two words for you. Games beat the sides. Yeah. Devolver digital was a lot of fun. Let's actually bring that up bring up their list of games so I have yeah their, their their website has everything that um right i'm just trying to game send plus that to me max earlier. thing it, it's hard it must be hard for everyone else because everyone tries to be funny because that's just let I me mean, look that's what we did right everyone tries to be funny right. so it's rough when devolver digital actually it, is funny. it is funny yeah absolutely yeah. they're kind of making the rest of us look bad yeah, well, they they like hire actors and stuff, and it works. Oh, that's true. They do have professionals. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine spending that money. <laughs> or you can hire us. You could just you could watch your viewer count just slide in real. I time. mean, E three was over, so I, like the people who were there for new games. <laughs> anyway, like... we'll, talk, we'll talk about this during the show. But yeah, it is. I mean, honestly, it was fine, but it was funny. <laughs> All right, they can see us now. Uh, Starting soon. When we're waiting, just a, a little bit. Game fire, just to make sure. Did you tweet Jeff yet that we're going live? Uh, did I? I think I did. Yeah, hang on. I did. Just hang on. I'll do it again, or I'll make sure that people know. Hang on. Yeah, you did seven minutes. 
know we're doing this because we are springing it on people. Oh, a... oh, it's funny how this actually feels more like E3 than I thought. Like, oh, I'm in E3 mode. I'm having fun. It's it's crazy, but it's good. Yes, thanks again, everyone who watched us on the official E3 stream. Anyway, I recognize the shirt. If, does anybody know what this is, shirt is from? I'd be you, I'd be surprised. You've told me before, and I don't remember anymore. Yeah, I assume you already forget. It's backwards. That doesn't help. It says the electric umbrella. It's a Disney thing, right? It's a Disney thing. I thought I'll even say that because even then, yeah. <laughs> that may not help you unless you're as big of a Disney World nerd as I am. You don't know what the electric umbrella is. Jeff, the Breath of the Wild trailer was not for E3. Look, don't tell us that now. <laughs> that can't be right. I, I looked for E3. <laughs> if that's true, don't tell me. Yeah, I, Cyber, I saw I, I Cyber, I saw your thing on Twitter, and I'm like, what do you want me to do about it now? <laughs> like, <it's... laughs> don't tell us if that's true. I... And you know what? If you don't say anything, no one else, no one else will know either. Yeah. So keep your mouth shut. I'm all just right. Gonna tell myself that can't possibly be true because I looked for E3 things. I hope, yeah, we're gonna completely say that it was absolutely from E3 and we did nothing wrong. Yep. <laughs> Gosh. All right. Um. All right. I think we can probably get started. We'll yeah. Right if everyone, if everyone so wa everyone watching with it, time. like, give a thumbs up. It helps people find it. Do that, hit that here, like button. Here comes. Here comes the oh yeah. Summer. Yay! That's kind of I don't know. It sounded nice. Yeah. If you thought it sounded good, I guess. Wait, what am I talking about? I, I don't have an. Yeah, I wouldn't have heard what you heard. Maybe it's not great. It sounded weak to me in real life. No, it sounded good on the mic. Mm. Do you want like ASMR of me like disgustingly slurping my beer? Please, God, no. <gasps> oh, God damn it. Mm. Uh, you know what? Oh, so hoppy. I'm going to have one too. Oh, what did I do? Whoa, you're going to drink with me? Wow. Yeah. I, I, I kind of feel I am kind of sad I don't get to pick out our E3 beer this year. That's usually one of my jobs. Yeah, you go to the grocery store. We go to the grocery store and you get the beer. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. oh, I think I have the most refined beer tastes, right? Yeah, I believe so. I think about yeah. all of us. Yeah, I, think I mean, look true. at this body. I clearly drink <laughs> too much I'm, beer. I'm doing a, a, a Homer. I'm a, I'm a Homer. So I'm doing New Belgian Wild Ride. Nice. Hey, yeah, New Belgium's great. Yeah, it's I, awesome. I mean, I drink uh, Great Lakes almost constantly. Right. The real hometown beer now here is uh, Penguin City, which is very good. But it's also, it's like intentionally very simple. It's just a Pilsner, which or, right. something on this, which is fine. Right. Today I need an IPA, 9% IPA, technically an 8.2, but we'll round it up, even though that's not how it works. Nothing but natty lights for Mike and Jeff. God, I had a... <laughs> My cousin was like a, a big frat boy, right? Which was hilarious. And he loved Natty Lights. And he, he told me all about the Natty Splatties, which is apparently what you get the next day. <laughs> one time natty I went to one of their splatties. frat parties and was drinking their Natties with them and playing beer pong. And uh, AJ, my brother, who, who you may have seen RKO me, had to come get me. And friends were waiting at my, at our house to hang out with me, and I forgot because I was wasted with the frat boys. And I got there, and they were almost mad at me by literally like – like fell out of AJ's car. It was like writhing on the ground in a giggly drunk state. And AJ <laughs> walked away from me in disgust while my friends just stared at me. And I was like, AJ, wait, the beer will need it. <laughs> Clearly it was not what I needed. <laughs> so, so my friends weren't mad at me anymore because they clearly saw what happened. <laughs> All right. I think we're about ready to start. I feel like my only story of that is I remember, um, suplexing someone into a dumpster and then the next thing i knew i woke up the next day and that's it I like that. that's yeah yeah that's all that's i remember more, you've been in one more fight than i've been in <laughs> yeah well no i've been in like probably like three or four more fights than you Mike. but that's just those are my <laughs> old me. days i've changed a lot yeah all right there's too much i'm just gonna say it my screen has too much more room than your screen no that's fine i, I was trying to adjust the size of it first and then okay. yeah there we go well I mean, it bothered me that's fair Jeff was on two E3 events today. Oh, right. <laughs> Devolver Digital. I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Jason Momoa guy. Everyone's, you're not the only one to make that joke, Nick Turbo. All right. 
let's do this all right i need to just hit the record button i think other than that we're good okay yeah i'm not gonna do the music this time so five Whoa. four three it's the internet you're busy let's do this i'm jeff grubb from gamesbeat.com joining me is e3 famous mike minotti that's right he's e3 famous everybody you really you're more e3 famous than i am because you had the e3 logo right over your face the entire time finally where it's yeah. always belong <laughs> uh for people who don't know what we're talking about and and god bless you uh we were the closer on today's e3 broadcast <laughs> and you you wouldn't know that from the chat who was like where are the games yeah, where are the is, games why are you showing these you, stupid what? idiots <laughs> We always knew chat would be a kind. Yes. We're like, look, we're just oh, doing of like a 10 minute skit looking at some highlights from past E3s. And I even said I wasn't going to watch it. Of course, I watched yeah, it. I same. watched what chat said. It almost wasn't as bad as I thought, but there same. was definitely a steady oh. stream. People were like, where are the games and like the Z's? And I wouldn't be like, well, guys, like, look at the schedule. Like, yeah. E3 <laughs> is over for today. You don't have to watch it anymore. And to be in our defense, uh, the, that chat is like that the entire time during Ubisoft they stuff. Really Z, skip, skip, yeah. skip. Uh, during right. Devolver, so oh, cringe. I mean, it must skip. just be a bunch of like fifteen-year-old energy, right? Like, oh, of course, grown man just watching something for five hours and talking about how boring it is. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I'm sure there's some of those as well. But uh, I, yeah, I agree. The chat was not nearly as bad as I thought it would be, and and I definitely saw them. We got some laughs, especially when you said that mm. Keanu Reeves is going to come back out and apologize this year. Uh, people, <laughs> people like that one. Um, well, you're very funny. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for saying it, Mike. I didn't want to be the one to have to say it out loud. So yeah. Um, we are going to talk about Ubisoft. We're going to talk about the, uh, the Wholesome Direct. There was the, another Guerrilla Collective show today. There was another one last week. There was a second one today. And then Gearbox? I, Gearbox, I, and, Devolver Digital. Devolver Digital. In the headline here, I put what, the... Yeah. I think we had a better show than Gearbox. Yeah. <laughs> it was just Randy Pitchford being weird for like a really long time. I stopped watching it, Mike. I had to stop. It was kind of him. Was he, was he humble bragging about the Borderlands movie? Like, I mean, that's- does he, what, Did he think that we didn't know? I, I mean, that's what it seemed like. He was just on the set bothering people is what it seemed like. <laughs> I, I, I got through it by just imagining, I wonder how these people actually can't stand Randy Pitcher. Right, right. And I, I'm like, a part of me just wants to go and apologize to these people and be like, this is not a representative of the video game industry, but maybe it kind of is. Of course it is. I think he maybe is. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> Randy Pitcher. Okay. So uh, where should we start? This, this is what the show is going to be today, everybody. We're just going to well, talk about E3. We've just... been doing it so far. We're going to keep it up. Uh, and let's today talk about we're... Ubisoft. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about Ubisoft, Ubisoft first. Okay. Because they're, they're the biggest one today. Everybody knew that they would be the biggest one. First big thing there was uh, Rainbow Six Extraction. Um, this one was interesting because it had like a bit of everything in terms of how do you present a game. Right. It had like the big long CG trailer and then it had the gameplay uh, deep dive. I feel like if you have a big gameplay deep dive for a AAA game these days, you don't need that CG trailer thing anymore. I agree. Like, oh, that was a little weird. But I mean, people seemed into this. We sure are getting a lot of co-op shooters, huh? Yeah, it's really happening. I think um, people, I mean, they, this game was happening before the pandemic, um, but mm -hmm. I think that in a lot of cases, people maybe uh, move those ideas up to the front of their queue to like, hey, let's get these games out there in a world where people are playing a lot of games together. Um, but but there's yeah, there's like this and the Anacrusis and, and uh, Back, Back for, for Blood, Blood. which yeah. there's some rumors of that. Maybe we could talk about that later. But um, yeah, there, there's a lot of these things happening. And the thing is, you could see how they all look pretty similar, right? Like um, Rainbow Six Extraction, I'm looking at it and like, yeah, these are aliens, but they all are kind of fitting into that mold of what you expect from something like the Call of Duty Horde mode or the um, or uh, uh, Left 4 Dead or something like that. These these are aliens that just like have these zombie characteristics to them. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'll try it. I'll play sure. it, but I, I wasn't like, this, it's not bringing a ton new. I'm sure. I'm, I bet the rainbow, si the rainbow six side of things is probably where the interesting stuff will come from. Like you'll get some cool gadgets and stuff. Um, but other than that, I'm like, eh, I, I'm not too excited about this one. 
Sure. I mean, look, I I've barely played that franchise, really. I know a lot of people like uh, Siege quite a bit, and it's smart yeah. that this is pretty separate from that, although with like some of the same operators, as they right. call them. So it's something that can coexist with that. Hey, Louis Patelli just sent a super chat, and this is related to Ubisoft. I was hoping Ubi would finish off by dropping the title for their Star Wars game. Is there a chance we hear anything about it before the end of 2021? So I, I heard it, and I think this is a uh, Gersman over at Game, uh, Giant Bomb. They did a react uh, reacts today, and they were, um, and he's like, I don't know if the EA deal is uh, expired enough for other companies to begin showing their their games. Actually, uh, like I think we I think we got to get through this year, and then the, the EA deal will be like officially behind us. And, and like they've they've announced the games, but they've announced that they're going to make them in the future, and are going to be revealing them in the future. And I think we might have to get past them for them to like feel completely comfortably legally to actually start showing these games. I think that might be a big part of this. Well, let's just talk about what they actually closed with then, because I'm just going all out of order. But we did That's get fine. the Avatar game at the end, which I'm kind of excited about. I'm almost like afraid to say that because, I, I, you know, Avatar gets dunked on a lot. And, you know, I'm not saying without any kind of, a des, you know, desert, des, desert, desertization deservingness man, man you just broke my brain uh deservedness? What's the, deservedness? deservedness without any merits let's just say without any merits yeah let's <laughs> use a different word i get it and maybe i'm actually okay at that franchise now just because of the disney world park that they built based off of it that's actually incredible but i thought that looked pretty cool i'm kind of into that uh and it was i think it's a good thing to close on like yes they announced that already but i think a lot of people weren't necessarily expecting to see that already I yeah I, I I agree I I think that um Mike I, I know you're worried about coming out and admitting that you're a big Avatar fan fan and and I want you to know that you're in a safe space because so am I I'm excited about this game too yeah let, we're doing this, it. this is it we're doing it, everybody this is gonna be a it's big happening. Avatar fan cast um I I yeah I love that movie it's a, it's a it's a totally it's like fun. it's a fun solid movie that like pays off on all its setups in a really yeah. good way. It's just good filmmaking. Um, it is incredible. People are like, oh, this is just a formula done by this other movie. Like, not like all those Marvel movies that you guys yeah. like, right? <laughs> right, uh, okay. yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like, yeah, like, we, we've, if you look at it, they're like, there's like 28 stories that have ever been in movies. Okay, yeah, we're getting another one of those, yeah, but it's it. just really we well done. It. We get it. Yeah. Well done. And look, sometimes it is just enough for a game to look really good. And look, the people are like, you probably can't even name one character from that movie anymore. You're right. Don't care. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I named Jake Sully because like uh, the, the uh, alien always lady always go, always says it funny, and I'm like, so I always say that in my head. <laughs> but that's it. I don't know what her name is. Uh, no. Yeah, absolutely not. General's name, the uh, uh, evil space patent. Don't yeah, what, what does it matter? He's evil space patent. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it's like the the uh, Elden Ring memes going around. It's like. Uh, like gamers are like, oh, it just looks like Dark Souls, and they're like mad. And then me, oh, it looks just like Dark Souls, awesome. It, it, like, yeah, it's just totally <laughs> fitting the formula yeah. that I want. Um, um, if you would love what they built in Animal Kingdom in Disney World, it's so yes, freaking cool. I really, really, it's really want to go see it. It's ever, I've when, heard nothing but good things about that. Whenever, whenever people go to Disney World and like I, they ask me like, what are the big things? The one that they always report back on liking the most is the big Avatar ride there. Everybody loves that, and a yes. lot of them say, I didn't even like the movie, but the ride was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I um yes I'm very excited to uh to go check that out um real, real quick if you are um a Patreon member or someone who subscribes to the Twitch or uh, or basically if you're in the podcast producers thing and you want to ask a question for this episode I have the questions document open here so go follow the link that is in the pin message in the podcast producers thing in Discord if you want to ask a question for this show mm -hmm. all right wh what else Mike M well Mario. In Rabbids, uh, what, 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 what's the subtitle? Space something? So it's the space one. It's the Mario Galaxy-esque take on it. Sparks of Hope, right? Light of? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think that's right. And like, amusingly, this uh, Nintendo accidentally leaked this themselves. My first question for you is, like, what happens when that happens? Is Ubisoft, like, really mad at Nintendo? Or is it just not that big a deal? Like, what do you think is going on behind the scenes after that happens? I, I bet that it is... Um... When it's Nintendo, it's like, oh, I wish you guys wouldn't have done that. And Nintendo's <laughs> like, well, we did it. What, do you, <laughs> what you gonna do about it? What do you want to do about this? And they're like, oh, not nothing. We were just, we just hoped you. Okay, um, but if it's like, <laughs> if it's Best Buy Canada or something, yeah. uh, Best Buy Canada gets yelled at, or Walmart Canada, whatever it is. Uh, Isn't it incredible how often games get leaked like this? But like by some person just in like the CMS, like 
putting down the wrong scheduled time for a post to go live or something. Yeah. Happens. Like I've done it like once or twice right. in my life with an embargo. I get how it happens. It seems like it happens disproportionately a lot for big secret video games. Well, I, you know, people always say, oh, it's just some intern. It probably is someone who is like pretty low on the totem pole doing these things. Like, just data entry jobs right so it's probably not someone who's getting paid a lot might be someone who doesn't even care about games all that much um it's you know that sort of thing can happen it's but it's it is weird and it does seem to happen all the time especially these days more recently now than ever before what what, so what'd you think i thought um you know we said how we hope that they go really crazy with the sequel maybe this isn't a super crazy direction but taking a lot of Mario Galaxy inspiration is a good idea. Yeah. I like Rosalina a lot as far as like auxiliary Mario characters are concerned. So I think that's nice. It's a, you know, I, I don't know why we don't have Wario or Waluigi. That's a little bit of a bummer. I don't know why there's some weird original character who looks like completely like a Nomura Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy character. I'm not sure what that's about, yeah. but sure. Again, I, I almost wish they just didn't do the rabbits anymore. The rabbits are just globbing on at this point. They are not outside of these games. They are not relevant anymore. They're yeah, globbing it's... onto Mario harder than I glob onto you. <laughs> Fuck you. I was going to make the joke first. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Beat you to it. Beat you ah, to you it. You son of a bitch. Um, uh, I thought it looked pretty good. Uh, it looked... Um, it's not exactly what we were talking about. You're right. Where we were hoping they were just going to complete com- come from completely in left field with... Uh, stuff we never would have expected, things that felt like they are really expanding the Mario side of this universe. But you're right. If they go in the galaxy direction, there's a, there's a lot they can play with there. Also, they could be saving quite a bit um, for, for stuff that they're sure. going to reveal later. Uh, I guess that's just me getting my hopes up. But they, they did the Donkey Kong DLC for the first one. Yeah, so people they ha- did like that. I never played it, but people liked it. Right, and so like they have a history here of like doing more than what, you, what they first mm-hmm. show. And, and if it is DLC, I guess there is still hope there. But... Um, uh, it, you know, if this is it, if this is kind of what the game is, I- I'm still going to be, I'm still going to be right there. I really yeah, like it, that first game. It is very much Mario and rabbits too. And yes. Sure. And I'll, I'll be there on, on day one. I'm very, I'm very glad this game got announced. So what do you think? So a lot of people think that this game looks too good to be just running on normal switch hardware that this, at least what they showed us was running on like switch pro or whatever it is. Do you think, do you think there's truth to that? Uh, fr- from what I've heard, I think I might be hearing some of the same things that other people who've sure. been saying that have been, been, hear- been hearing. Uh, that seems like that, that's exactly what's happening here. Uh, that th- those screenshots, when I first saw those screenshots, I'm like, wait a second. And then like, you know, started asking around about it. It seems like that's what happened here. And they, I, this is why people thought it was going to get announced before E3 is because there were going to be games like these that are going to run better. And these publishers are going to want to say that uh, they're going to want to like tie their games to the Switch Pro because they know people are going to be buying games with the Switch Pro and they want their game to be that thing, especially Ubisoft, who like, has a history of being there like uh, day mm-hmm. one with a new console. Um and so, yeah, I, I think that we're going to find out this game has, has built-in support for the Switch Pro and its features. Um, and But it just when do we find that out? Who knows? I, I, I would imagine at this point it's going to be sometime in the next couple of months, like not right after E3 or anything like that. Probably not even tomorrow, but or Tuesday, I'm sorry. Uh, but, but I guess still maybe. Uh, you know, if they're showing games like this, maybe. Maybe we'll find out about it sooner than later. We're about to see a lot more of Riders Republic, which like looks like it could could be good. How are you feeling about that one? Uh, I, I am really ready to play that game. I, yeah, I, I, I'm into that st- sort of stuff. Um, I think it seems like almost like a modern day pilot wings. But uh, yes, with... I also got that vibe because of the right. wing suit at one point. I was, yes. Yeah, I was totally like, man, Nintendo could have done something like pilot wings ish by now with this idea. It would have been cool. Yeah, it, it, but this one, you know, and it's very focused on multiplayer. They talk mm-hmm. about like six v six modes and uh, it seems very uh energetic and and high intensity and like there's a lot going on and yet you're still kind of off on your off on your own like just trying to do the best tricks you can do and i could see that work working very well for an online multiplayer mode uh i i think that um it, you know I, I really like games that do this stuff well like descenders that recent like downhill biking game and it has like a really good physics system and stuff like that so as long as this game nails that side of stuff where it just feels like really good physics i'll be into it uh, i think steep was pretty okay but it didn't like get over the hump for me in terms of physics i hope a lot this of people does. didn't seem super in love with steep they think there was right. promise there but something about it was a little off that's so. I, I think that's exactly right it had promise i hope this sort of delivers on it mm-hmm but I mean, that, that was kind of the big stuff. We got Rocksmith Plus, which I know my younger brother is excited about. People who like are like intermediate guitar 
players. I think that's a fun way for them to learn new songs and all right. that stuff. Uh, more, uh, they're going to be supporting Valhalla into 2022, which to me means, I mean, I, if anybody thought we were getting new Assassin's Creed this year, which I would have already warned you against, that's certainly not happening. Correct. Um, mm-hmm. You know, a lot of DLC. There's a Watchdog Legions DLC thing with um, the the main character from the first game and that popular side character with the LED face from the second game. A lot of Ubisoft crossover DLC because they already announced that Far Cry Six is going to get that Oops All Villains DLC yeah. thing, right? <laughs> Which you know that those are the only characters from those games people seem to like or remember. Right? All those wacky villains, not wacky, like charismatic y villains not not my thing but people love them people can't get enough of them far cry villains yeah the villains that are, are for people who are like overacting like not like you know yeah. Giancarlo Esposito is not an overactor but they when they brought him into the booth they're like no just go wild ham it up ham That's it true. up yes do as much acting as you possibly can and he was doing it in that cutscene they showed today for sure I, I do love how they're always like oh he's like really charismatic and he's like you know oh you think he's so evil but like he maybe is the hero of his own story then it's just like a trailer where he shoots a room full of people <laughs> yeah. or his people who just shoot a room full of people like okay so yeah. much nuance to his evilness right and he's like basically like scolding his son in public like even if that's all he was doing that's pretty evil too like but no sure. he shot up shot up human being in the face like in front of a bunch of people so yeah um i i don't know i i think that uh you know, i i was um expecting maybe more blood, blood dragon stuff after that uh netflix geeked week thing where they're like we're doing a uh blood dragon remix show with a bunch of ubisoft See, crossover stuff got announced so i'm glad right I'm glad my hopes weren't i was just puzzling surprised that they're just re-releasing blood dragon presumably remastered in some way as part of the far cry 6 like season pass season pass whatever. right they're releasing as part of that they didn't say anything about a remaster i i hope i would imagine it would at least be you know up, up res and stuff that's that's pretty yeah, easy something um but yeah I, i'm looking forward to playing that game again absolutely I, I i'll probably get the season pass just for that almost uh if i need to um but but yeah i, I think overall the ubisoft show was pretty good I, there was nothing yeah, I thought uh, solid nothing super surprising but i think that's a matter of like the you know mario and rabbits we had started hearing about it this past right. week right and then when it got leaked right before, it was like, okay, so we definitely know this is here, and that brings that takes a little of the, of the wind out of the sails, but not so much because I th I still thought it looked really good. Mm -hmm. Now I did see on Twitter Beyond Good and Evil Two was trending because people were upset it wasn't there, which I, we didn't expect certainly. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, what do you think about Beyond Good and Evil Two, Jeff? Is that actually ever coming out? I I don't think so. I don't think that'll ever I come out. I don't think so. I mean. I it's, so it's, I mean, and so and so, right? I mean, he left, yes. and at least uh, there were certainly sources that say he left because he was part of like the kind of cleaning up job they had to yes. do there because people thought he was like an abusive, and that was totally kind of his thing, right? And it was also very expensive. It was doing all this experimental tech. It was a sequel to a game that was not very popular that came out forever ago. Like, why would what? I, you know, I hate to say it because I like Beyond Good and Evil enough. I think that this could be a cool game. Why would they actually make this game right now? I don't know. It seems impossible to me. Uh, yeah, everything you just laid out is exactly what I would have said. That it, To me, you put all that stuff on one side of the scale, and then you try to figure out reasons why you do make this game, and there's just not a lot for like why you do it. Um, I think that it's the kind of thing that sounds really good as a promise and then actually executing on that promise is very yeah. difficult and a lot of money and i stupidly just stupidly ambitious in a way yeah. that i don't actually think you can do like what they're and, talking and, about like, i was like that's it, bullshit and ubisoft like finishing these kinds of games it takes like 14 studios they're not going to yeah. take those studios mm. off of assassin's creed and they're not going to take mm -hmm. them off of like the next ghost recon so mm -hmm. i just i do not see a world in which this game comes or out off I think... of skull of bones which we know are in development and that's right. something that they are probably much more interested in they see a lot more potential in skull and bones than in beyond good and evil too yeah i think I mean, it's, it's cruel in a way that they ever announced this yes, or even like pretended up. that this was a game they were going to release to be honest because they know there's a lot of people who really want this and it's silly that they announced it when it was in some super prototype kind of fantasy blue sky thing i i i agree uh and i think you know we always theorized that one of the reasons they did it it was part of like 
establishing this narrative that they had so much in the works and all these games are going to be the biggest they've ever done and this is why ubisoft stock price is this high and so vivendi can't afford to overtake us in, in a hostile takeover um <clears throat> excuse me now that the vivendi threat has sort of subsided not sort of it has subsided it's not really there anymore uh, there's no one really trying to take over ubisoft uh yves Gilmalt is sort of fighting this battle within in terms of like trying to main control after uh, all, all these uh, cases of abuse got out there uh he's just not he's just not going to really put the effort into this i don't think and i think that like, something like um a Splinter Cell game is much more realistic right, than... I was about to say, like, uh, at least do Splinter Cell before this, which, again, right. is something people really want. It's something that doesn't need to be that ambitious, right? Like, you could basically just look at what Hitman is doing or what the past Splinter Cell games did and be like, let's do something like that with our money. Yeah, I, I think... Um, it, 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 uh, the, I know they like everyone says that like what would the new Splinter Cell game look like as a Ubisoft game, but uh, the 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 atrocious and horrible man Greg Miller says uh, what I think is actually a good idea, surprising coming from him Ooh. that uh, the, uh, it should be like Metal Gear Solid Five, basically just do mm. that with because that's an open world game and that's yeah. totally what Ubisoft likes to do. Just do that mm -hmm. with Sam Fisher. I'm like, oh yeah, why don't they just do that? That game could really work, but oh well. Yeah, absolutely. Why don't we talk about some of the other shows from today, and then we'll get the people's uh, super chats. Yeah, that sounds good uh, to me. If you if you're watching, uh, go ahead and hit that like button. We got we have 900 people almost watching. Let's see if we can go over, get over a thousand again. A th wow, look at that! I, I didn't even notice. It was hilarious during our E3 thing because like it was at like 80 or like 80 thousand when we started, and of course because it was the last time of the day, but yeah. also maybe because of us, it just like started Definitely. <laughs> like comically going down like in uh -huh. a cartoon, you know? Like it was Daffy Duck after he went on after Bugs Bunny, and it, the joke is that no one's watching it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was dying. It was yes. hilarious. Uh, Devolver Digital. First off, their production value is very great. They actually are very funny. But like, then the games they show actually are kind of fun and intriguing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that stuff looks pretty good. Uh, the kind of funny thing they close with is Demon Throttle, which is being made by the Gato Roboto guys. And it's like only physical ever, they say. I'm, I wonder if they're actually going to stick with that. It's coming to Switch in 2022. It's like an old, like, 8-bit style, like, top-down shooter game, uh, and it has a bit of a Western theme. It looks fun, but apparently only ever going to be physical. This is not the only game that got announced today as only physical on the Switch. So I wonder if Nintendo made some change into its, like, store policy oh, today. You don't, think uh, you don't think this isn't just entirely a joke? Uh, I don't think so, uh, because I don't think you could do this as a joke. First of all, if mm. people buy this with the expectation that it will be physical only, uh, and they're uh, investing in it because they think like this is going to be worth a lot of money, um, and then you start selling it digitally. Those people are going to be very angry. Um, it's already <laughs> not a great idea unless it is like a joke that you are committing to, because people will get like, uh, you know, pe people will be mad about um, being able to. What, what's the word when you're trying to save these games for uh, over time um, for history uh, for posterity? Preserve. Yeah, pres yeah, preservation. People will be worried about preservation and stuff like that. So you're going to have to deal with those sorts of criticisms anyhow. Um, to, like, do a bait and switch would be a really rough move. I I, I, uh, I think I am going to try to buy this thing. I don't buy fiscal games, really, but I think I might try to buy yeah. this just because I think it's a cool idea. Uh, it's a it's a weird idea. I hope it's not it doesn't become common, um, but I, I, I still think it's cool for what it is for, like, this one-off thing. Yeah. I, I have to read this super chat right now from Migs Luna. Uh, he, uh, Migs Luna. I don't know why. It sounds like a sounds like a feminine name to me. She says, "Why did Greg from E3 call you old and said you don't know what you're talking about?" Because <laughs> uh, he's jealous. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's just he's a. He, I know he like seems like he's pretty big on camera, but he's just a small soul. He's got a wow. tiny shriveled soul that doesn't. He's incapable of love or feeling. Uh, the only time he's ever been happy is when he gets platinum trophies on PlayStation. Uh, <laughs> it's, he is a he's a disgusting person, and so when he sees someone that is just like uh, truly happy and beautiful like me, he can't stand it and he has to lash out. So I hope that answers your question. Maybe he's mad because you know how to play games on PC. Yes, exactly. Yes, he's he's afraid of the mouse and keyboard. Yeah, he, he I wets shouldn't himself. Be, I shouldn't be throwing any shade. He was nice to me. I love Greg. <laughs> Greg, Greg's my boy. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, going back to Devolver Digital, there was uh, Death's Door, which uh, kind of had some Hades vibes in terms of an act being like a top-down action RPG. That looked really nice. There's their weird Devolver Tumble Time. It's just like their mobile yeah. game thing. 
uh, a wizard with a gun, which is a game about a wizard with a gun. You know, all this stuff looks, looks pretty cool. Is there? I know you were excited about Terra Nil. Yeah, it's, it's like a reverse a, city builder. Yes, where you like take uh, something that's been destroyed by like human uh, over like uh, over sprawling of their cities, and it's been abandoned. It's just this trash environment, and you slowly like bring life back to it and nature back to it. It's it was very satisfying to look at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was that was a fun show. Uh, even the the uh, wholesome game, uh, uh, wholesome director is called. Not that like I necessarily super remember any specific game, but I like the idea of a showcase being based around the vibe of a game, and then that yeah. vibe carrying over. And maybe it was because there were so many presentations that again were just trying to be funny to varying degrees of success. With us as the most successful, then Devolver Digital, and then right. like Gearbox down here. Yeah. But one that never even tried to be funny was just no. This is chill and relaxing, and even like the hosts are channeling that energy. That was a very nice show to watch. Like there's a a game where you just make hot pot, and like or in like another another separate game where you just make soup. And I was like, <laughs> all right, great. <laughs> Very good. I like yep. it. I mean, it's, there was that game where it's just like helping your grandma build confidence in her ability to walk, and I <laughs> almost cried. I was like, "Oh my god, this is this is a lot. This is good. This this, this is very good." Re- read this super chat real quick. This one from Vsim, the, the the most recent uh, one from Vsim CEO. Jeff, yeah. looking good in Devolver show. Yeah, we didn't even talk about that. You made an appearance in Devolver too. You hot shotted me. You you got on E three before our segment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, people don't know that there, there is a guy that looks he looks exactly like uh, what's his name? Aquaman. He looked yeah, he looked exactly like Jason Momoa, a little yeah. shorter, maybe a little stockier. Right. But more even like more buff and stuff. But then he just has long hair that's kind of curly and a beard. So everyone's like, hey, it's Jeff Grubb. I'm like, oh, God, here we go again. But whatever. I mean, I don't mind being compared to Jason Momoa. So, I mean, I'm not going to really complain. You should, you should hear the unflattering people I'm compared to. So, I, I, yeah. When I when I had short hair, I used to get compared to uh, J- uh, Jack Osborne, uh, Ozzy Osborne's son from that show, wow. The Osborne. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I get I, I get um, I get the guy who made clerks from back when he was fatter. <laughs> silent. I get silent Bob. <laughs> Yeah, any he white guy bald. with a beard who's bald. Yeah, I guess that would that would be what you get. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, Mike. What what else do we have? Uh, we we did uh, we touch on Devolver, Wholesome. Uh, anything from Gorilla Collective? Not, probably not Gosh. much. I can't. It was so that seems like forever ago. I mean, again, there's a lot of nice looking games. I, I'm sure if I looked at a like all the shows again, I'd be like, that one looks nice. Uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, look, I, I, we're as bad as anybody else in terms of like being somewhat triple a focused sometimes i have to admit well, i mean it, we will, there's games we're going to keep tabs on and we're going to look out for and yeah the thing with gorilla collective about. is if like if you're interested in that stuff all of that stuff is already up on steam for you to like go and like add to your wish list and it's already out there so it's it is inherently less newsworthy than like a new game announcement it, it's just it's hard to like get up the energy to want to cover it um but but yeah like i i thought there was some good looking stuff from that but i thought uh, there really is something like there is a gap in quality, at least in terms of like when you're looking at a trailer on a, on a live show between something that was at Gorilla Collective and something that was at Devolver Digital. Um, and, and maybe that's just my taste or something, but I thought everything in Devolver Digital looked really good and I wanted to check it out. And the stuff at like, a lot of the stuff at Gorilla Collective, I was like, I'll play it. I'll see if it's my thing, but I'm not like over. I'm not overwhelmed with the urge to play it right now. So I think I'm just, it's probably just a matter of taste, though. Yeah. Should we uh, let's 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 maybe we should talk about Gearbox now. And uh, uh, I saw someone said their super chat got ignored. We're, we're getting to the super chats later. Don't worry. Yes, not we'll ignored. Get all, we will get to all of them. Yes. Not a lord. Not ignored. Elijah. I see you there. Um. All right. Gearbox, which that was weird. Yeah. I mean, it really was just Randy Pitchford, like being like, hey, look at me. I'm a Hollywood guy now in Budapest. Yeah, look at all my Hollywood friends. We're making the movie based off of my thing. And I'm Randy Pitchford. Yeah. Like, and look at me. Clearly, you want a lot of me in the show. Like, you know, I understand right. it's your company. You can be in the thing as much as you want. But like, should you be? Uh, it, the one thing it reminded me of is the guy that played Agent 47 in one of the Hitman movies talking about how, like, there is nothing worse than waking up like at 4 a.m. on a set in Budapest to make a video game movie to make you want to get your whole life in order or something like that. (laughs) And it's like, that is what this movie is. This is like they're filming a movie based on a video game in Budapest. And I'm just like, 
I bet there are some people on that set having that realization about their life. And <laughs> oh, Randy no. Pitchford's just strolling around like, come meet E3. Here's my friends at like, E3. What, Here, what is E3? Uh, yeah, yeah. Come meet Borderlands fans. Coffee? What? That's a camera. What are you talking about? I know you're a magician, <laughs> but I could see what's happening. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, getting Going to Kevin Hart's friggin' trailer. Leave the man alone. I can't. If I was in my trailer, I would want to be left alone, I would think. But... Randy Pitchford, man. There was, but even aside from that, like the way they presented Homeworld 3 without actually having anything to show of a game that was already announced, but they had like a very minimal trailer, mostly of people just talking about the game, but they still spliced it in between everything else with no yes. rhyme or reason. It was so that was weird. It was jarring. It was disconcerting. I like felt like disoriented whenever that would happen. It was weird. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, they had Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, but they of didn't have anything did. really... Yeah, of course, but they didn't have anything new to show. No, I just mean, like... And even you... Greg Miller was saying on, like, the official E3 yes. thing, like, oh, it's weird that there wasn't, like, more gameplay or something to show. Well, this is we what they did with Borderlands, right? Remember, remember the lead-up to Borderlands? Borderlands was in every single show. Mm -hmm. It was at PAX. It was at whatever, like, one E3 thing, then the next E3 thing, then the next E3 yeah. thing. Randy Pitcher just wants to get it everywhere and so we're gonna see tiny tina tina's wonderlands over and over and over again i bet we have not seen it the, the last of it before the end of this week i feel like we'll also, probably see at least one also, more time i love how transparently there's like that like marketing message of making sure people don't think that this is like a full-on borderlands game or something there right. every single time it's like ha we're just talking to this person off the cuff what is this game well it's not like a borderlands sequel but it's like <laughs> familiar but it's like you could jump in totally if like you're not used to borderlands or anything it's a whole new setting but like you know if you like borderlands you'll like it but it's completely new yep it, it, yeah okay. yeah you can tell media train they uh i think those mm -hmm. things are called uh uh, KMQAs, uh, key media question and answer. And there's some person who had to write all that stuff down and make sure that they highlighted that every time. This is not Borderlands, but you could still like it if you like Borderlands. And that was in every answer for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I wish we didn't have to see Randy Pitchford today, I, I guess is my big takeaway. Well, what was what was more unpleasant to see, Randy Pitchford or Godfall? <laughs> I can't even say oh, the name man. of that game from that. I, Godfall, I love how Godfall came out with like an exciting, buzzy trailer, which at, at least at first was just like coming to an older system. <laughs> it is coming to PS4 for people who don't know. It was. And then they, there's also an expansion coming that they announced right after that, but at the moment, all I could do was just like blink right. and yeah. wondering if this was real life. Do the blinking white guy, like, what? What? Huh? Um, It, it was funny to me specifically because earlier today, uh, Steven Tatillo, who was uh, who's at Axios, was like, what are the exclusive next gen third party games that are out there? And people were like, yeah. oh, here's a few things. And then uh, Gene Park was like, everyone always forgets saw, Godfall. Godfall's I one of them. I saw that too. I saw that And that too. lasted for like six hours. And now it's coming to PS4 as well. So, All right. I uh, mean, clearly it's Godfall uh, and Gearbox being like, uh, we want to make more money off this. We better bring this out on PlayStation 4, which yep. is, you know, fine. There's totally logic fine. to that. Yep. It's fine, but it's also, it's Godfall. It's hard not to laugh. And I know that sounds mean because it is mean. <laughs> yes. Well, and we, you know what? And that's why I was like, you know, people are mean in chat or during our thing. And I'm like, you know what? We're mean all the time too. This is okay. We can take it. Yeah, we, we can, can take it. it. We did. We dish it out. We'll, we'll take it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I'll say, I know how the people who make Godfall feel a little bit, I think. <laughs> Uh, but oh, yeah, no. kind of can't help. We are very mean to Nushi Doc. <laughs> we are very mean. <laughs> yeah. I love Sonic as a kid. Yeah. I still love Sonic. <laughs> I went with a Sonic doll. And the poor <sighs> man who made Sonic, I was, I laughed when he was fired. <laughs> I laughed like a maniac. <laughs> an we were awful pretty person. mean to that guy. Yep. Oh, yep. I'm going to feel bad about that one for a long time. Like we still make Paul and Wonderworld jokes. What's wrong with us? Uh, we're, we're dead inside, I think. Yeah, we're bad people. Uh, we've been doing it too long. We, we really are jaded. The E3 the history ad. lesson did not cure us. Um, <laughs> uh, do, anything else, or should we get to the Super Chats, answer some questions, maybe talk about the I rest think, of the week? Yeah, let's get to some questions here, huh? Yeah, let's super do it. Chats. From Brett Bingham, Xbox needs a Left 4 Dead-style game with Master Chief, Doom Slayer, Marcus Phoenix, etc., where you fight against the Covenant, Locusts, and demonic enemies. You know, that would be kind of a good way for them to do a crossover game 
like you know everybody thinks fighting game when you're doing a crossover game right. that makes some sense because so many of their properties are shooter based like you could put the fallout guy in there mm-hmm. yeah you know, right there's you could put you know bj blaskowitz in there that would make some sense i think i like that a lot too i, I think uh it's, speaking of crossovers uh I started getting really excited about the idea of like a PlayStation universe crossover because of that Rhino gun in Ratchet and Clank. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we're thinking like, oh, this could be like the beginning of them thinking like, oh, let's, we don't have to do it as a PlayStation Battlestar, mm-hmm. Battle, uh, Battle All-Star. Uh, PlayStation Battlestar Battle Royale, which I actually liked, but I know, I'm very you, alone in that. You're very, very alone. They could just do it like, you know, these games are tied together with an overarching story or something like that and do that for mm-hmm. a couple of years. That'd be cool. But uh, I, I like that idea, Brett. Jedi Moss 4 says Gearbox went full Pitchford. Never go full Pitchford. That's right. Words to that live by. Right. Uh, Rand all Thor 19. Jeff, what do you think of Jez's Xbox bunch of shrimp emojis? And what does it even mean? I don't know. I don't know what the shrimp emojis mean. I, we, we, you said you thought it looked like the typhoon thing, but now maybe I it's think not. It's typhoon the... related, but what's, what's Jez's Xbox? G-E-Z? Jay, Jez is, that's that's Jez Corden over at Windows Central. Uh, he's the one oh, that. So uh, his like rumors, like what do you think of his right, rumors? He, he's he's the one that first teased Typhoon. Uh, so yeah, it could still I can't be related to that. Of your fellow leakers, I swear I, you're I, the only I'm one not, that matters to me. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. I I, uh, I have not kept track of the shrimp thing. I'm like, I'm at a point where it's like we are in E3 and I'm keeping track of so many different leaks in my head right now. And so many different mm-hmm. rumors and like different tiers of like what stuff to like believe. Uh, I've, I've definitely said stuff I'm not supposed to say. Uh, like I'm at that point where I'm like my ADHD cannot keep track. I am at capacity. And so oh, good. I'm not even going to try to figure out what the Trump thing is. I'm just going to like let tomorrow happen. We'll see what we find out. That'll be fine. I think it's, so. just, I think it's typhoon. I think we're okay. talking about typhoon. Good morning games says hey guys do you think we'll see rares everwild during e3 no 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 so everwild is one of these games that well everwild let's i mean it got rebooted i mean this thing had to get rebooted we everyone knows publicly the creative director left and when the creator creative director left they restarted production on that game they rebooted it so uh it's a ways off it is currently scheduled for like a window of like 2013 but there's a lot of 13 2023 jesus christ um <laughs> man man a decade off just a decade off mike that just was pretty decade close off. that's all that's all you're good we, uh, Jeff, tw- we got we got three more days of v3 left buddy pull it together oh, all right all right uh, you're, 20- you already said you said you said 2022 for halo uh, that, infinite in our discord instead of 2021 and people lost their mind heart attack. yeah people, and i like didn't notice and i'm out there like whistling to myself making myself yeah. a sandwich <laughs> and everyone on the discord is like it. yeah like there's a fire happening on the discord uh yeah that that game scheduled for 2023 but it's um easily there's a lot of stuff scheduled for 2023 from xbox right now so if there's any reason to push that game to 2024 it will get pushed like that it is easily in that zone where that could happen to that so yeah uh, elijah stapovic see i told you elijah I wasn't gonna forget about you any chance we see lego star wars at e3 tomorrow uh, I think that there is a coin flip of a chance. I think there's a 50-50 chance for that one. I don't know for sure, but I've, I've heard I've heard that name thrown around before for the Xbox conference, but I couldn't confirm it. So I'll say a coin flip. It's kind of hard because we've seen that game multiple times already, right? It, Correct. It, you know, how, how excited. I know there's people who are clearly looking forward to it because we get asked about this game quite a bit, actually. So but yes. it doesn't seem like maybe the most quote-unquote hype thing to put on your show. Yep. People know it's coming. Uh, Nintenderic, I like that name. Couldn't they remaster the old Splinter Cells? They could. The, the problem is the, the Splinter Cells everyone really liked were the ones on the original Xbox, right? So that, that would take a good amount of remastering. Like the ones yeah. on 360, I remember people thinking that those were a bit too linear and shooter focused. I don't think those are the ones people are necessarily nostalgic or thinking about when they say they want another Splinter Cell. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that, the, you know, um, we heard talks of like, oh, why is Naughty Dog going to remake um, The Last of Us or something like that? And uh, in, instead of some older games, uh, like the first Uncharted. Well, the first Uncharted would be a lot more work. And that's what the mm-hmm. recording said. And I think that's exactly right here. Um, where, yeah, you could bring Xbox Splinter Cell and like Chaos Theory up to like up to date, but that would take a ton of effort. So so I, I don't know. I, I, and I do think, I know some people are like against the idea of like an open world sort of stealth game. I, th- I know there are a lot of people who uh, reacted poorly to Metal Gear Solid 5, but that is the best playing Metal Gear Solid game. And I think I mean, that, yeah, the gameplay of Metal Gear Solid 5 was, was great. It was great. There's just kind of some weird story fumbles in that game. That well, I, that I, but I think there's some people who just don't like the idea of that it went open world. Uh, and I, I think there would be some people who would be against that here as well. But for Ubisoft to want to make sure. that, 
I, I totally see that that working for them, but that was that's just a theory. Parmesan says, I know you said on Twitter not to expect Banjo tomorrow, but my question is simple. Why does Microsoft hate Banjo? I, I mean, I know I know he asked you, <laughs> but I think I could say that I don't think Banjo ever made Microsoft any money. Is, yeah. is why Microsoft doesn't like Banjo. 3D platformers are very hard to make, and you need a studio who is very good at them, and there are like two or three studios in the world who are good at 3D platformers right now. There's, you know, Nintendo's Mario team, there's Insomniac, then like maybe toys for bob and they're not they're they're not making 3d platforms anymore they're a support studio now so like who would microsoft get to make a new banjo kazooie like because that that version of rare right there like what do those guys know about they making don't want to do it right they now? they don't want to do it yeah <laughs> yeah so i don't know what do you think uh yeah i think that you're right that it hasn't made them money it's 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 a tough nut to crack in terms of making a three big 3d platformer it's um like they would have to like kind of make a new team that was dedicated to that and that's a lot of work and a lot of effort um and and the, you know the, a lot of studios they have are just busy right now they have like rare is jammed up with stuff they want to be working on they're not going to go work on something they don't want to do um you could have you could have double fine do it but double fine doesn't want to do it either so uh you would really have to bring right. in someone else specifically to work on it and that team just doesn't exist yet maybe maybe if psychonauts 2 really hits out of its league maybe that will drum up some interest to go back to banjo because like that is the quote unquote biggest right. 3d platformer maybe. franchise they have so if you really want banjo maybe maybe make sure you download uh, uh psychonauts 2 is what i would say rdx son of a fet asks which of the five rumored xbox new acquisitions do you both think will come true which one like, just ask, like which one do you think is the most likely jeff from everything we've been hearing uh yeah let me see if i can remember um so we have i, I know the ones that people are seeing a lot of our io interactive avalanche crytek and then uh, two other ones uh i think a uh, sobo is one that gets thrown around uh nether realm and then um uh, rocksteady rocksteady is another one that I, the, the, these are all rumors everybody we said on yeah. the show yesterday we were like we we're talking about this and people went out and tweeted immediately like, jeff is saying this is gonna happen and no <laughs> oh really that's funny just just relaying rumors everybody um i i think of those I think the most likely to happen is uh, it's tough because there's reasons why all of them could and why why, why they wouldn't. IO Interactive is working on a big expensive game for them, but I'm not sure if IO Interactive wants to be acquired and the deal's already done for the big game. So why do you have to acquire them? I, I, yeah, I mean, but maybe if it's if it's so expensive, maybe there's some logic to saying, well, it's less of a risk if we just own this team and own everything outright. Um, so I, I, I think among those a sobo is probably the most likely this is the team that does flight sim and so that's kind of a boring answer but uh, i think that might make, sure. make, make most sense but after a sobo i would i would lean maybe towards io interactive uh, it's um just because that would that team is uh making such a big expensive game microsoft might want to have that locked See, down i kind of feel like crytek is likely just because they haven't really made a very big hit mm. in a while so they, they, they probably can't be that expensive they probably want to sell right yeah you're Maybe. probably right so crytek kind of makes sense to me i'll say crytek is the one i expect the most yeah that, that's a that's some good logic we'll, we'll see if any of this happens mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh d scale d skills h town do you think there will be a this is available right now on Xbox Live moment tomorrow during the Xbox conference? Uh, I mean, yes, like, uh, you know, we, we saw that leak today for uh, Yakuza like a dragon, but I, I guess it's probably not what you mean. You mean like a shadow drop, like new release. Um, I don't know about that, but but there will be some games like added that day to Game Pass for the first time. And Yakuza like a dragon will be one of them for sure. That was the RPG you were teasing everybody about, right? Yes, yes. So if you listen to the show and you Let's haven't seen my Twitter, yeah, that's the RPG that I was I, that I've been teasing for the last half a, half a week or something like that. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Georgie says, I assume talking about uh, Microsoft, they can get Sumo Digital Sackboy Adventure people to make a 3D play. Yeah, I think there was an, there was certainly something to Sackboy Adventure. I think it was just wasn't complex enough to be like a truly great 3D platformer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't like. I got, you know, there was there was something to Sackboy Adventure. People's expectations for a new Banjo Kazooie are going to be pretty high, so it's it's going to be quite a task. Maybe they're up to it. I don't know. Robbie Phelps still sixty forty existing slash new games at the Xbox show. Jeff. Yes. Yeah, I think. So. I mean, I, I mean, let's. I think there's going to be four 
brand new, previously unannounced, but heavily rumored games. Uh, I think there's going to be Omen. There's going to be uh, the, uh, yeah, Typhoon. Thank you. Uh, there's going to be Forza Horizon 5. And now I can't remember the fourth one, but I, there'll be there'll be like four like that, and then maybe one or two other announcements, and then like if you consider like Starfield like a brand new game because we haven't seen a lot of it, that that'll kind of count, right? Yeah, that'll count towards that sort of thing. And then there's going to be updates on a lot of stuff. You're going to get updates on Grounded. Um, you're going to get an update on Sea of Thieves. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that we fully know about that has been released or is in early access, uh, and that that'll get quite a bit of the 90 minutes as well. So yeah, 60 40. All right, uh, RDX son of a fet just says Ori is better than banjo, and I agree. Should I play my Ori music box? Huh? Yeah, huh? you you whine to get it. You should get your money's worth. Yeah, I did want to get. It. I'll tell you what, it wasn't a pretty moment for me, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> St asks if Xbox acquires an IP, will it come with a studio? So I, I presumably maybe stuff like uh mortal Kombat, maybe he's thinking or he's thinking about something else or maybe is he thinking about konami stuff i guess because like you know people want xbox to maybe get some of these konami's ips but they don't necessarily need the konami studios right now no right um i i, I don't know i mean if you're buying someone like like nether realm or if you're buying someone like io interactive like yeah you're gonna get those ips uh I think if like you get rock steady, like do you get Batman? That's a whole, that's a can of worms. That's just, that's why that stuff is hard to make happen because uh, the studio isn't worth very much without the IP. Whoever owns the IP might not be, like they're not gonna sell Batman. Microsoft is not gonna come out of this owning the character Batman. So it's it, <laughs> like, <laughs> that'd it, it's- That'd be something. That'd be something else, right, exactly. So um, it, it, it's a, just a tough situation for some of that stuff. But yeah, there, there's a chance they'll own some of these IPs. Pixelated Pigeon asks, Jeff, what are your thoughts on R slash gaming leaks and rumors? Do you think folks there should chill out a bit? So that that's a subreddit, gaming leaks and rumors. Do you, do you frequent there, Jeff? I know you're a frequent leaker, so it sounds like a place you might enjoy. Although presumably they, they might hate you like Reset Era does. Uh, yeah, they do. Uh, the, the gaming oh, leaks are, good. G gaming le leaks and rumors. The biggest problem is they, smell, they spell rumors with a U. So you already know they're Ew. bad people. Um, but... Yeah. Uh, they 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 need to chill out. They are they are not very good at context. They are very bad at the game of telephone. Where I'll, I'll say something on the podcast, someone will post it, and everyone else will strip it completely of any meaning and any sort of nuance. And uh, and then people get mad at me when the weird un like uh, unnuanced take isn't correct. And I'm like, I, I never said that. You guys just don't fully understand what's happening here. But uh, whenever I go there and I talk to people or I comment, everyone's always nice and. Uh, and people, there's a lot of people who are grateful and, and enjoy just kind of like they're on a gaming leaks and rumors subreddit. So they care about that sort of stuff and they generally know who I am. And whenever I talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, everyone's nice and, and kind. And, and so I don't mind that part of it. The T Prince says, do you think we will see a new Donkey Kong game? So that has been a rumor that the Mario like Odyssey folks are making a new Donkey Kong game of some kind. Nintendo rumors are always tough they, they seem to be wrong more often than a lot of the other ones so i don't know you would you would think the safe bet would have been for those guys just to make mario, mario odyssey, odyssey 2, 2. Yep. right uh but you know maybe I, i'll tell you what i'll be disappointed if they're just making a 2d donkey kong game if they are making a ambitious new 3d donkey kong that'd be something exciting but that's just what i want to see in terms of am i expecting to see donkey kong I don't know. Like maybe that can be their big surprise here. We're expecting this to mostly be a Zelda show, and but you need something else, right? And maybe it's Donkey Kong. Yeah, well, I mean, we are kind of getting to the play. Breath of the Wild two came out in twenty seventeen. So did Mario Odyssey. Breath of the Wild that, one came out in twenty seventeen. Breath of the Wild one came out in twenty seventeen. So did Super Mario Odyssey. Um, and so you would expect uh, like, oh, Breath of the Wild two is about ready. They're going to show that. What is the Odyssey team going to have? Wouldn't they be ready with the game as well? Um, but but you're, you're right. They, they probably want to focus on Zelda here, and then we'll hear about whatever's happening with that Odyssey team later. I would love if we got the Donkey Kong game, game and it's like a real big 3D game too. I yeah, don't think it will again, be, Yeah, but again, if it was 2D, I'd be, again, there's like three or four studios in the world that can make good 3D platformers. So to have one of those people make the new the 2D. 2D Donkey Kong game I, would be a little upsetting. Not Agreed. really against 2D games, but there's a lot of studios who can make that game, I feel like. Uh, what else we got here from Brett Bingham? I guess 
Oh, I I skipped Doctor Butt Hugger. Let's get the Doctor Butt Hugger first. Don't Excuse skip Doctor Butt Hugger. I didn't mean to pass over Butt Hugger. Iron Galaxy made a profitable fighting game for Xbox last gen with Killer Instinct, and it was critically acclaimed. Why wouldn't Microsoft acquire them? Uh, That's a decent question. I mean, there is there is a whole awkward thing about Sony owning the largest video uh, fighting game tournament in the world right now. So maybe they don't want to invest in fighting games. Um, I, I, there is interest in making another Killer Instinct game. That's not new reporting. That's stuff that people have known for a while that that's been out there. It is just a matter of finding a team to work on it. My, I, I, from like glancing at Iron Galaxy from a distance, they seem very busy. Um, and, and so like the, one of the reasons Microsoft might not want to acquire them is you're going to go acquire them. And, um, first of all, they have to want to be acquired and who knows if that's what they want. But, but then sure. secondly, you, you are going to go acquire them and then they have to complete all of their contracts and can't even start working on killer and stick for quite some time. Like, I don't know if that's the case, but, uh, they definitely seem at capacity in terms of like working on a lot of projects. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, it's just, it's just a matter of timing. I bet. Uh, so back to Brett Brigham. I guess Xbox would want Iron Galaxy considering their past work on Killer Instinct and helping with Skyrim and Fallout 76 support. So yeah, that Iron Galaxy coming up again. So yeah, same thing. Maybe. Gaz yep. says, hold me, Jeff Hart. Mad love, Mike. Mad love to you, too. Look at that. You got a real heart. We, we yeah. have the emoji now because I'm lazy, but you'll get the actual <laughs> genuine article. Love Colin. you, Gaz. Colin asks, with Age of Empires 4 coming, any chance we get Age of Mythology Definitive Edition like the other older games? Love yep. the pod. Yes. Thank you, Colin. Um, yeah, yes. I almost, I actually double-checked while you were talking because I was like, did they not announce Age of Mythology Definitive Edition? And yeah, they haven't, but they they've done the last three, so why not? So you're saying it's happening? It's happening. It's, happen it's just a ways oh. off. It's a ways off still, but it's coming. Yeah, I yep. was just blabbering on. You're like, yes, yes, it's happening. Yes, yep. it's real. It's, it's real, it's happening, it's a ways off. That Those are the key points. Jeremy G says new post on our gaming leaks and rumors. Grub the scrub says Breath of the Wild 2 release 2017. <laughs> Motherfuckers. That's good Fair stuff. Enough. That's good yep. stuff. That's it for the super chats for now. If you guys have any more, we'll get to them before the end of the show. But Jeff, what, what is our Discord up to? What do they want yeah, to know? Yeah, yeah. We uh, we had one question and then I put out that call for questions. We got a couple more. So uh, we got a few here. Uh, mm -hmm. from Nick Turbo. Why isn't Ubisoft Plus on consoles like EA Play is? Uh that's a good question. I think they are working to make that happen. There was those rumors that you would, I had heard that you play plus could end up uh, like getting added into Xbox goal or Xbox game pass, just like EA play. Um, I'm not sure what the state of that is. If it happens, I don't think it's happening at E3. Um, and, and really, I, I don't really know if it's still going to happen, uh, but I, I know there was some interest in that, in that actually coming through. Um, but it, like, it, even if it doesn't get added to, to EA or to, to Game Pass, there does seem like why wouldn't they just sell it separately like EA Play? And I wonder if that's just a matter of like contracts and negotiating, uh, uh, you know, the, the fees and the split and everything. And that stuff takes a long time. So uh, Ubisoft seemed to prioritize Amazon and Luna probably because Amazon was giving them a pretty good deal and they'll they'll do the rest of that, do a, sa a similar deal with Xbox and PlayStation down the line, I think. Uh, Prime Gamer 92, you boys like Mexico? Virtual burnout. That's a uh, reference to the to the fine film Super Troopers. Um, <laughs> man, it's been a little bit. I think it's been a little bit. You know, I actually saw Super Troopers 2 in the theaters and liked it fine. I don't think anyone ever talks about that one, but it was fun. I, I, I really like that movie. I even liked the um the follow up they did a uh, beer yeah. quest or whatever it was. Oh um, beer people no people like beer fest. I haven't seen beer that fest, one. Yet. Yes, beer yes, quest. There you go. How beer old quest. are you? Beer quest. <laughs> it's like a person's grandpa. Uh, hey, Paul Paul Sack, real quick. What are the chances please. of Deep Silver joining Xbox? Deep Silver's embraced. They're part of the embracer yeah, they're, group. They're embraced, so. so I would say almost zero, if not yeah. zero. Yeah, who knows what embracers is like long term plan is. Um who is more this is from Louis Patelli? Who is more annoying, Greg Miller or Randy Pitchford? I mean, God, <laughs> I don't know. That's a tough one. Oh, come on, come off it, Jeff. You love Greggy. You love no. Greggy. Mm. He's a good guy. Mm. Randy Pitchford, come on. Mm. I, I don't, one of these is a joke, and one of these is I, I am not sure which one of these is going to end up in prison first, is what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. I love Greg. I do. Look, we haven't been on Games Daily yet. You have to play nice. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been on their their Games Cast, but not, not Games Daily. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, real, real quick, obviously, Prime Gamer was referring to Forza Horizon 5 there of Mexico. That is where it's set. Or, yeah, or at least yeah, like yeah. Central America, that sort of thing. Um, 
Tomato Soup asks, are there any more <laughs> JRPGs coming to Xbox or Game Pass besides Yakuza Like a Dragon? I don't know. Uh, I, I think that there's... I think there's like a small chance that that Final Fantasy collection that's been rumored could come to Game Pass on like day one. Um, that seems like the kind of thing that Microsoft would want to make happen. You better but not I, be teasing me about this Final Fantasy collection, Jeff. I swear to God. I, I, I hope I'm not teasing you. I th I've heard that it's real. I think at one oh. through six, we should really get that. Ooh. And then uh, and then I think, like I said, small chance. This is not like me reporting a new story. This is me kind of speculating and, and like looking at the tea leaves on this one. Um, I, I think something like that could happen. But Yakuza Like a Dragon is the one I know for sure is going to happen. What about Persona I, 5? What about Persona 5? I don't, I don't think that gets announced at E3. Um, I think that's still real. I think that's probably still going to happen still eventually, but not at E3. Okay. Okay. Um, two more here. We got Giggy asking, how's it feel to be public enemy number one and two on Twitch today? Um, no, I feel like I feel like we were probably way less public enemies than Randy Pittsford. Yeah. And maybe Kevin Hart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how Twitch chat felt about Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah, I, I, it felt good, though. It was, it was a life goal accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty good. I always, you know, seriously, I, I, like, I was the kid who, like, went to high school lunches during E3 week and, like, annoyed all my friends about it and was super excited and, like, really played into like, the whole, oh, yeah, this is a holiday thing and yeah. had a lot of fun with it. Was really excited that I got to go to my first T3. That was my big goal. And that was, like, 10 years ago now. I never yeah. even really thought about being, quote, unquote, in E3. Even right. In, like, never you thought know, that was a possibility. Weird, yeah, right. even in this weird like dig digital whatever this is, you can't take really this cool. away from us. Yeah, no one can take yes. that away from us, Mike. We did that. <laughs> it, was it was cool. Yeah, yeah it was uh, super cool. It was fun. And I, I th thanks to everyone for supporting us on that. That was that was great. I right before I started doing this job, I was delivering pizzas uh, for. I was making uh, pizzas. I, yeah, I was delivering pizzas for a really bad company, uh, Formaggio on Ohio State campus. I don't even know if they're still open. Um, but uh, th they paid me like minimum wage, and then they did, wouldn't make up the difference. Like when my hourly like tips didn't like make up the difference or whatever. Uh, so eventually, I had to sue them with the state. But that that's not the story. The story nice. is one of the days. Uh, yeah, I got the money eventually. Um, uh, during E three, I had a shift, and they were like, "Hey, can you go put flyers on all these cars in this parking lot?" I'm like, "Yes." And instead, I took my laptop and went to Barnes and Noble and watched all of E3 that day instead. So I was on the <laughs> clock there. And instead, I was just like working on E3. And like, I was like writing stories for a website. I don't even know who I must have been Bitmob or something. So, uh, yeah, that was that was pretty yeah. wild. Like, that, that's kind of right before Bitmob. Huh? Oh, who combo. With before? Com combo. Combo, okay, combo, combo with a K. Yes. Yeah. That was like and I always say that's uh, that goes Kotaku joystick and then like the 50 yards of shit and then combo. Um, the shirt toys there somewhere. Joystick, is way joystick. above. Yes. Yeah, me too. Um, oh, God. Last question. Nick Turbo, where is my book review? Yeah. Listen. Well, okay. Well, we can put that on hold until after E3. Let's be fair. Uh, yes. I'm not going to do it during E3, but it's I did. It's just the Bowen Wonderworld book, to be clear. Not the novelization. Is it a novelization or is it a spinoff story? What is it? No, it's a novelization of like every <laughs> level is a chapter, like for real. Wow. Yes. That sounds awful. It's really bad. I started it and it is just nonsense. <laughs> it is nonsense. <laughs> it's nonsense. Um, How many? You, you must be. There can't have been a thousand people who have read that. I, right? I mean, there was there's like barely a thousand people who bought the video game. So yeah, like yes. <laughs> um, I think it like someone so like, had to write that. Someone had to write that. I hope we they got paid. Find the author. Call, yes. Can we please find the author? I, I think please. the author. I think the author might be listed as Square Enix. So we'll have to look no. into that. <laughs> I hope that's not true. I have to double check. I have to double check. But I, oh, I feel like that might be, be the true. case. Please <laughs> be true. Oh, okay. Oh that, my god. That's all the questions for now that I have. Um, any more super chats? I think we're good on super chats. Double right. check. But what? All right, Jeff. We got Microsoft tomorrow. Uh, uh, we got yeah. We got Microsoft tomorrow. We have uh, Square Enix tomorrow, right? Um, yeah. I know you've been setting expectations for for Microsoft on Twitter. Do you want to just go over that for all the lovely folks here? Yeah. Let's uh, let's see. I because I, I, I I've seen some people make some pretty wild um predictions and stuff that like i feel like i've done this over and over and over and been like hey this isn't going to be here and it's not taking like some like if i say something that like i don't want to like take over the internet that always seems to take over the internet and when i say something like <laughs> everyone should be repeating this and it feels like i have to like hit it against the wall over and over for people to notice but um games like avowed perfect dark fable hellblade 2 um that project dragon from ioi uh everwild and compulsion's new game uh none of that stuff should be at E3 tomorrow. I think there is a small chance for Hellblade 2, but if they show Hellblade 2, 
it'll be like developers working at computers that sort of thing and i think that there's a very good chance that instead of putting that in their e3 showcase where it wouldn't do very well they will treat it as like um a video to release separately after e3 and just put it out like that instead so um like what will be at e3 well we, we talked about that uh, on the show and if you were like paying attention you should have a pretty good idea but there will be some new stuff that i listed some new games like omen and, and typhoon um and you know starfield uh starfield, of course, uh, halo halo Very multiplayer focused halo yes For forza horizon 5 um stuff like that so uh i i think that there's it's still going to be a pretty good show overall but if you if you were like looking forward to these games you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer i don't necessarily think you're gonna have to wait till next e3 like hellblade 2 you're probably gonna see gameplay for that before the end of this year um and and that's probably true for, for many of these other games as well uh but between now and that next e3 like there's gonna be a lot for, for microsoft to talk about uh most of these games are just scheduled for 2023 and that's the big thing here so uh, we're just far enough away now where a lot, talking about a lot of these things doesn't make sense ghetto smurf just asked on super chat monkey island crossover with sea of thieves question what mark? a good idea i wish i wish yeah. let's, let's just say uh, let's just say Disney owns another pirate based property that might be a bit more uh, <laughs> well known than Monkey Island these days. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Disney's going to be there. This is going to be an Xbox show. <laughs> um, and then uh, Square Enix, Mike, how about you? What do you, what do you think we should expect from that? Obviously origins for sure. Right. Um, I mean, gosh, it's hard for me because I just focus on Final Fantasy. That's all I seem to care about. No, I mean, like, I, I think that's going to be a big part of it. I want to see that collection real bad. I'm almost less certain about how much we're going to see of 16. I'm, I'm not expecting yeah. to see much of it. I'm hopeful, maybe. I I'm mean, not expecting is, to see much of Dragon Quest either, really. It's a PlayStation game, like, through and through. They are paying for the exclusivity. So uh, if it doesn't show up here, it's going to show up at some state of play down the line. And that's fine. So, like, no one would be upset about that. I'm not even sure, like, what they can... Like, they, they, they're probably going to have something on 14 to hype up Endwalker. But I don't think they're going to show anything new. Because we, we already know the big bullet points and we know the release date so anything aside from that is kind of the super anusha that's only going to appeal to the big final fantasy 14 like i'll be excited to learn about like the new level 86 role action for dark knights but maybe the general audience will not be we're gonna get guardians of the galaxy at that yep. uh yeah definitely so That'll be probably their quote unquote like big thing like that and Origin are going to be the big things, right? Bob yeah, Origin. I think Guardians of the Galaxy is going to be like their headliner for the show. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, mm -hmm. And then anything else tomorrow? Now, Demi Crow just asked, could we get an announcement of Persona 4 Golden on consoles? Well, you know, Vita was a console, but yes, I know what you mean. We should. <laughs> That's like, I don't, I don't know if we actually are going to. I wouldn't expect it. I, that baffles me that you can't play Persona 4 Golden on a Switch or a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5 right now. I have no idea why not, but I don't think we're going to I don't think we're going to suddenly get good news about that tomorrow. Yeah. Um I think uh, we got another super chat. Yeah, Echo Bay, have you heard at all if Deck 9 is developing a follow-up to Life is Strange 1 with Max and Chloe? It was rumored a while ago, but no updates since. I am not the biggest Life is Strange fan in the Same. world, Jeff. I don't know much about this series, I'm afraid. I know what I mean, there is a new Life is Strange that's coming out, presumably not what you're talking about. So so no. we don't we haven't heard anything about uh, a new game with the original characters. Right. Same. I have not heard. All right, Mike. Uh we should probably wrap this up. Uh, I guess yeah. any other thoughts about what what to expect? Anything uh anything else you're looking forward to? Now, Jeff Brigham just said in a super chat, in other words, Jeff Grubb's paradox. I can't yeah. remember what that's in reference to anymore. I was going to just play it off cool like I did, but I don't. Well, I think we could still play it off. I mean, it's just paradox. a cool phrase. Paradox is, a, paradox is the name of a studio, isn't it? Is that what that is? I'm tired all of a sudden. Yeah. Must be that 8.2% IPA. F Fonzarelli Gaming. No questions. Just wanted to say, keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. Thank Man, you, Fonz. Cool Francis. 19 hey guys do you guys think that the avatar gameplay that was shown was actually running on next gen hardware hope you guys have a great weekend i mean it's probably running on like pc stuff right yeah I would at, think at this so. point in development uh yeah that, it, I don't, like, it wasn't running on playstation 4 i'll say that so yeah it, it was probably just running in a pc environment that's what i would expect yeah tcmf games official look at all these late these late super tests people know they're running out of time to get them in i like it What's going off the state of play? Late June, question mark, and then some emojis. No, not June. Not June for state of play. I, I don't think so. Yeah. Longer. Right. I don't think June. I mean, we're 
we're already halfway through june and uh you know by the time we get done with e3 it, you know we're going to be getting into next week here pretty soon and uh I mean, I don't think they're going to do a late June show. I think they're going to, if they do something, it'll be July, August, a summer state of play. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense to me. All right. I think that's it for the Super Chats. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, for you everybody. This. Thank you for watching our big E3 debut. Yep. Uh, Mike, I think we, we peaked at like 1400 yeah. or 1464. I I thought, I, we were doing this so like off the cuff. I didn't even think we we're going to get that many people but look at that well, thank you i think what happens is, is like all the live streams of people doing the reacts live they 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 stop and then we're going well, with our like late in the day stuff and and of course people just love our our natural chemistry well, we're e3 famous now so that's right that's what it is yep <laughs> right uh people no one like, oh, look how these two don't announce video games and are just <laughs> saying bullshit instead they were big fans of it yeah and, and uh no one yelled at me for not liking john wick so i thought that was really nice um i, I made fun of you while you were gone earlier for not liking john wick, okay so thank you fine. thank you appreciate that all right I everybody. Said, oh, your tastes are usually okay then you just have weird takes yes. like that out of nowhere mm -hmm. uh thank you for watching everybody we will be back with another new episode coming right after e3 tomorrow uh we'll be reacting to, to microsoft square enix and then another show on monday and tuesday um so and then and then after that i think i might take a nap or something like i might rest yeah. a little bit yeah there's, might, gonna uh, be, there's gonna be a very slow wednesday or two or thursday or something coming up yeah i might <laughs> honestly just take a day later this week take a day off um but until then uh daily podcast episodes uh you can get this on the podcast feed as well if you like you're just dropping in later and you just want to listen you can do that um all right, we're going to get out of here, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Until tomorrow, have a good one. Take care of yourself, and goodbye. Bye, everyone.